In today's video, I'm going to give you a roadmap for how to approach your coding interview prep. Right? This is going to be the same roadmap that I share with all of my students. And the reason that I'm giving this to you is for a very specific reason. And the reason that I want to go through this roadmap is that more often than anything else, when I talk to people, I see them getting overwhelmed by trying to do too many different things at once. Right? When they're approaching their interview prep, they try and do a little bit of system design. They try and do a little bit of data structures and algorithms. Maybe they go grind on leak code. They go, you know, try and do stuff in Algo Expert. They do a million different things. And the problem is that they feel completely overwhelmed by the process because they're not making linear progress. Right? They're jumping around to all these different things. They're going a little bit in a lot of different directions without actually being able to progress linearly. And so what I want to share with you today is a linear process. How do we approach interview prep in a linear way from start to finish? Of course, things aren't perfectly linear, but how do we break this down in terms of like order of operations? So that's what I want to share with you. And let me jump over to my iPad and break this down for you. So when you're thinking about interview prep specifically, I break it down into four main steps. And the first step before we do anything else has to be data structures, and algorithms. And when I say data structures and algorithms, I mean something very specific. I don't mean that you go on leak code and you look up string problems, right? I don't mean that you go look up string problems and you do a bunch of random problems and you just try and solve them. What I mean is that you go intentionally through each of the data structures that you need to know for your interviews. And I have another, uh, I'll link to it after, like for the re replay of this video. We have another video on this, the data structures that you actually need to know for your interviews, and you go intentionally through each one. And for each of these, this is the framework that I recommend. You're gonna start in the center with the core data structure itself. This would mean like, what is the data and how is that data represented? If we consider a tree, we have nodes, we have some sort of like, you know, node class. And then that node class is going to have maybe a value. It's going to have a node left and a node right. Right, this is a very basic tree class or tree node class. And this is the very starting point, but then we need to understand, okay, we have this node we have this tree, what are we gonna do with it? How do we add stuff to the tree? How do we remove stuff from the tree? How do we access different nodes in the tree? And so once we understand that, that is the first thing that we have to start with. That is that like basic foundational building block. Then from there, we work one layer out. And this is what I call the core patterns. And the core patterns are everything that we can do with this tree. Right? We could traverse over the tree. We could find a path between two nodes in the tree. We could find the longest path in the tree. We could find the shortest path in the tree. We could figure out, is the tree a binary search tree? There are a million different core patterns here, which are really like, okay, now that I know that fundamental thing, what do I do with it? And then finally, the third layer and the final layer of our data structures and algorithms here is what I call compound algorithms. And this is where we take those basic building blocks, those basic pieces that we started with and turn them into something that is starting to resemble an actual coding interview, right? That's starting to resemble an actual leak code type question where rather than it being like, okay, go implement binary search, go implement a uh, breadth first search, go, um, you know, reverse a linked list, whatever it is. Now we're going from that to, you know, you have some problem that's requiring you to pull in these different techniques. You think about like an LRU cache, right? An LRU cache is using maps, it's using linked lists, it's using these things in combination in a compound way to get a result. So the first thing in your interview prep that you should be doing is this very intentional study of your data structures and algorithms. If you don't take the time to do that, I like to think about this as like, the tactical skills, right? So if you consider playing basketball, right? With playing basketball, there are all these tactical skills you need to know. You need to know how to dribble the ball. You need to know how to shoot the ball, how to pass the ball, how to you know, dodge someone else. And if you don't have those skills, you can have all the strategies in the world. I can tell you all these different things that 
you know, all these different techniques, all these different plays, but the rest of it doesn't matter because you don't have that foundational skill. You don't have that like building block in place. And the data structures and algorithms for your coding interviews is that building block. So until you've done that, until you've done the focused work on data structures and algorithms, don't do anything else. Now the next step, so that's step number one. Step number two is having, is developing a framework for solving problems. And this is something that we work on with our students a lot. This is something that, you know, if you uh, decide to join one of our programs like Coding Interview Mastery, uh, you can go to bitebybyte.com slash training to learn more about that. Um, this is something that we spend a lot of time on because now that we have those building blocks, this is like the strategy of, okay, now you know how to do these things in the basketball game. How do we make plays? How do we actually compete with another team in a way that we can succeed? And a framework, a very simple framework that you can follow here would be like what they teach in cracking the coding interview. And I don't remember offhand exactly what it is, but it's something like, you know, understand the problem, brute force solution, optimize code and test. And this sounds very simple, right? This sounds like, oh, well, I just, you know, of course, I'm gonna do all these things. But the reality is that what do most people do when they go into the interview? When most people go into the interview, what they do is they go, they look at the problem, and they think to themselves, I wonder how to solve this. Right? They basically stare at the problem and try and come up with a solution. And when you do this, you have three possible outcomes. Outcome number one is that you see the problem and you recognize something that you've seen before. Right? You recognize a problem that you've solved before, you remember how to solve it, hopefully. right? Hopefully, if you've seen it before, you do remember how to solve it. Um, and you're able to come up with a solution. Possibility number two is that, you are, is that you see a problem that you don't recognize, and you stare at it, and a solution just kind of comes to you. Right? You're able to come up with a solution on the fly. And then possibility number three, which I see happen a lot, is that you look at the problem, and especially when they start to get more complicated, you look at the problem and you just have no idea what to do. And now if you don't know what to do, what do you do, right? Do you, uh, you know, try and look at more examples? Do you try and come up with a solution to a simplified version of the problem? What process do you actually follow? And this is where having a framework and having a, I am going to follow these steps every single time makes a huge difference. Because now when we do this, you can follow the first step. So like, okay, you can ask yourself, do I understand the problem? Yes or no? There's plenty of cases where, you know, if, if they're asking you a tricky problem where you might not understand the problem at all. If you, don't, if you understand the problem, great, we can move on to the next step. But if you don't understand the problem, okay, now we can identify what don't I understand? Why don't I understand? Why don't I understand the problem? When you're practicing, you can do the same thing. You can prepare for this situation of, these are the types of problems that I didn't understand. These are the situations that I got myself into where I didn't understand the problem. How can I do differently in the future? Right? This is where, again, having a coach who you can work through this with, who you can talk through, okay, what is it that I'm missing about this problem, makes a huge difference. If you do understand the problem, you move on to the finding a brute force solution. Now, in this case, it's the same question. Okay, was I able to come up with a brute force solution? If not, why not? How can I get better? The great thing about having a framework is that not only are you consistently following a process in your interviews, but also if you get stuck on a problem, you know where you got stuck. You know what specifically you got stuck on and you can work to fix that for the future. And so these two steps really constitute the coding interview portion of your interview prep. And these are critical that you do first. And yes, there's other things you need to do. And we'll get to that in steps three and four here, like, you know, system design, behavioral interviews, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, even company specific research, whatever. That's all important too. But the coding interviews are really important to do first and build up these two skills because they take the most time. Most people, go into interviews and they think something like this. They think, you know, software engineering basically equals interviews. Basically, 
the skills of software engineering are going to translate over to the skills of interviewing. And the reality is that sure isn't the case, right? Most of the people that we work with are people who have five years, 10 years, 15 years of experience in software engineering. It's not that they don't know what to do as an engineer. It's that they don't know how to take that and translate it into interviews. And on the flip side, when we talk about this in a second, behavioral interviews and system design interviews, those interviews are actually designed to test your existing skills. Those interviews are designed to test what is your actual ability, whereas these coding interviews are really just designed to test can you code and you know, have you practiced this. So if we do this first, what this allows us to do is it allows us to build that foundation where we can continue to practice this. Right? Like we can continue practicing as you go through the rest of your interview prep. You're going to continue practicing the coding interviews. And you're just going to layer in the other things that you need because the other things, even though they might sound intimidating, even though they might seem difficult, are easy in comparison. So with that in mind, the next step, step number three, is behavioral and system design. And I group these together because, not because they're exactly the same, but because they both fall into that category of how do I take my existing experience and translate it over to speaking clearly to an audience, right? To speaking clearly to my interviewer. When it comes to system design, it's not, the purpose of the system design interview is not that you studied Kafka, right? It's not that you memorized how to, you know, implement a RPC with RabbitMQ, right? Like this is not the point of a system design interview. The point of a system design interview is for them to see this is what you've done in the past and how do you think about designing systems. The big difference between beginners and advanced people is not that they know more things, it's that they think of things that a beginner, it's that an advanced engineer will think of things that a beginner engineer wouldn't because they have the experience doing it, right? Because they've done this thing before, because they've been through that like trial by fire, they can talk about this intelligently in a way that someone who just studied from a book is never going to be able to. And that's okay because the whole point of this is to help you to start leveling and help figure out like what level are you at? Are you competent for the level that they want you to be at? So with system design and then with behavioral too, how do you express your projects? How do you explain what you did? Now in both of these, in the same way that you do with the uh, coding interviews, we want to have a process, right? We want to be strategic. And so like with system design, for example, you should always start with uh, really, uh, let's see, Requirements. Once you really understand the requirements, because this is one of the hardest and most important things in system design interviews is every interviewer is looking for something different. So making sure you're dead clear on those requirements. Then the high level design, right? The high level design is going from, okay, I have these requirements. So what does that system look like? And then Number three is going deep on one area. And specifically, this is where you go deep on an area that like you already understand, right? I don't want you, if you're, if you have, you know, if you're a front end engineer and you're trying to go deep on, you know, message handlers and database design, what's the point of that, right? It just shows them that you studied something. Whereas if you can really go deep on here's where my skill is and guide the interview in that direction, that's how you succeed. So again, I, we have more information on all of this on the website. I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to spend 20 minutes talking about this, but this is going to be step three. So first you spent maybe like, let's, I, I would recommend this whole process unless you have like full time to spend on it. This whole process should take like three months. This is a three month process. It's not three months of studying full time. It's not three months of quitting your job. It's not three months of you know, never being able to go out with your friends, it's three months of like one to two hours a day. Three months consistently of one to two hours a day. And so what that looks like is you're spending a month on just the data structures and algorithms, right? We really want that solid. You're spending a month on building, the, on going from the data structures and algorithms to the framework, right? And then you're spending a month of going over and strengthening your existing skills, reviewing the things that you need to know, plus, as I mentioned, these Q 
carry over. So you're going to continue practicing those coding interviews as you're doing the system design, as you're doing the behavioral interviews. And so with that, the final step to this, and this is something that I always want to bring up because I think most people don't think about it until after the fact, but it's something that you really want to think about from the beginning. It's negotiation. Negotiating that salary, negotiating the offer that you're getting, because let's imagine for a second that you have a job, you get an offer. Now, should you negotiate that? I think the answer is obviously yes, but what if you only have a single offer? Can you negotiate even if you only have a single offer? Well, the answer is that you absolutely should negotiate because what are they negotiating against? You're just not, you're not negotiating between two offers. They're negotiating to take you away from where you are right now. This is why you should never quit your job unless you absolutely have to before finding a new job because it always gives you leverage to negotiate that new role. Right? It always gives you leverage to move into, okay, they need to convince me not only that they're going to pay me better than what I'm getting paid now, right? because why make a move if you're making the exact same amount unless you hate your current job and you don't have to tell them you hate your current job. You can just pretend it's great and they need to negotiate. But not only that, they also need to pay you a premium because you're taking this big risk by jumping ship and moving to something, moving into the unknown. So you should always be preparing to negotiate and this is something that you can think about in these early stages as you're having those conversations making sure that when they ask you for a salary range you say hey i'm you know i'm sure that we can come up with something that we will mutually agree on once the time comes i'd like to see if this company's a good fit first something like that deflecting that question and then ultimately once you get to this point making sure that you actually do negotiate so like once you have an offer realizing that you should always be negotiating at least 10%. You should always be asking for at least 10% more than what you're getting offered. Worst case is they say no. Best case is you make 10% more. I had a student who made, who negotiated an extra $60,000, right? It just, by doing that, otherwise you're leaving money on the table. And so this is a very quick overview of this framework, right? Obviously, you know, there's a lot here that we don't have time to unpack because I don't want to you know, go on and on in this video. I do talk about this more in our free training, which you can find over at bitebybyte.com slash training. But hopefully this helps give you a little bit more context in terms of how to think about this process in a linear process. If you try and think about it as all these different things going all these different ways, it's really hard to make progress because you're, you're getting pulled in a million different directions. You're going to feel overwhelmed by the process inherently because of how you're getting pulled in all these directions. So try this. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments below if you've done something like this before or if you're going to try this. Let me know uh, how it goes for you. And thank you everyone for joining me.